This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Richard DiCicco. He is the CEO of Iconic Brands, a publicly traded company. The symbol is ICNB on the OTCQB. Richard, thank you for joining me today. How are you holding up? Robin, I'm holding up great. It's great to be here today with you and looking forward to telling you about ICNB and your viewers all about Iconic Brands. I look forward to the opportunity, and, and again, thank you for joining us. So with that, this is our first time we're doing an interview together, so I'd like to start off with an overview and history of the company. Take it from here. Sure. Pleasure. It's good to be here again. Uh, Iconic Brands. What is Iconic Brands? Iconic Brands is a company that specializes in the development, marketing, sales, and distribution of alcoholic beverages. We do non-alcoholic beverages as well but our forte really lies in the alcohol beverage sector. A um, little bit of the history of Iconic Brands, as you asked. Uh, Iconic Brands, uh, I've been with Iconic Brands as the CEO for since inception, about 12 years. Iconic Brands went through the typical reverse into a shell, uh, lived a little bit of its life on the pink sheets, um, encountered uh, the perilous world of maneuvering through all those uh, if you will, graduations to where we are today onto the OTC. And, um, you know, I'd like to kind of do like a little public service announcement here. And I say this, uh, frankly, uh, with no malice or anything like that, just as a little bit of a, an education, if you will, that we went through. I think it's, it's good to speak about. And I think it's good that everybody understands what the process is all about. So we made moves along the way, every one of them with our eyes open. We went from A to B to C. We encountered all sorts of people, all sorts of uh, opportunities or not so good opportunities. We, we looked at the uh, businesses in front of us and what the risk and reward was to make those moves. Uh, we entered into the world of uh, death spiral financing. You know, we entered into all those things you hear that people are very leery of. But I stand here today, or I sit here today, and, and I can honestly say that uh, I'm one of the few CEOs that has emerged from that world. And today, as I sit here, the company is 100% debt-free. Uh, well, well, firstly, congratulations for that. That's a, that's a, a big milestone for any small micro nano cap company. And you know, I appreciate you giving that that PSA because it's, you know, these are sometimes navigating these nano micro cap waters, especially when you're an emerging growth company and getting the right financing and partnering with those various firms, it can be very difficult. It can be, uh, you know, it's challenging and educational along the way. So it, it, it's really, it, it's good history. It makes for a better company all around. You know, uh, what I failed to mention as well is not only sitting here as CEO since inception, some 12 years plus, uh, I've never traded one share of this company stock ever. I've invested over a million dollars of my own capital into the company. I believe in this company. I'm all in one million percent into this company. And I know as we hear uh, what we have going on and as your viewers hear the story, uh, I'm sure everybody will leave here, one, uh, excited. And secondly, they'll certainly be uh, more informed than they were going into this interview uh, about the alcohol beverage industry in the and Richard, I, I, that's actually a perfect transition because I want to understand the company's value proposition a little bit more. This idea of from concept to completion, you know, what, what does this mean? That's a great question. And uh, let me roll into my background a little bit, so you, which will frame concept to completion. So my background is I'm in the alcohol beverage space for over 45 years. I was a third party contractor for international distillers and vintners. That company name probably wouldn't mean much to you or your viewers, but it was a subsidiary of Grand Metropolitan, a company at the time that owned such companies as Burger King, Pillsbury, haagen and a whole host of hospitality companies all over the world. International Distillers and Vintners was their alcohol beverage company uh, that they had divisions of all over the world. In North America, three of those companies were my clients. I worked with a company called the Paddington Corporation. Again, the name might not mean anything to you, but their brands were Bailey's Irish Cream, J&B Scotch, Di Serrano Amaretto, uh, Goldschlager, Malibu at the time. These brands 
are very, very uh, powerful still to this day. Another one was a small little company in Teaneck, New Jersey, Absolute Vodka. Michelle Rue, icon of the business, you know, an iconic brand, if you will, Absolute. He built that brand, a true marketing genius. The third and oldest of the three siblings that IDB had in North America was the Ubine Corporation in West Hartford, Connecticut, Schmirnoff Vodka, Black Velvet a whole host of other brands, way ahead of their time with private label with TGIF Fridays. So my background um, reinforces this concept to completion. What does that mean? So somebody like myself, my background, if you came to me, Robert, and you said, you know, I'd like to do an alcohol beverage product with my name on it. And I'd say, okay, first thing I would say is, do you drink? The second thing I would say is, what do you drink? So this way here, I can kind of start fitting the puzzle pieces together that it makes sense and we're not out just to put out a product to put out a product. <clears throat> so let's say you like vodka. So I would go and get some feedback from you as far as what vodka you like or what profile. We develop that liquid profile. We source the cap, the cork, the bottle, the label, the design, uh, where it's going to come from. Is it an imported product or is it a domestic product? Not only do we do all that, once we all agree and you like what you see and you like what you taste, we start putting all those pieces together and we come up with a finished product. We then take that product, submit it to the US government, the TTB, formerly the BATF, and we get what's called COLA approval. COLA, like Coca-Cola, Certificate of Label Approval. That's our license to go. Once we receive that Certificate of Label Approval, we have our liquid approval, we start to build the pieces to bring that product to market. Well, that's great to bring a product to market. It all sounds good. And, you know, I refer back to, I don't know if you watch Shark Tank at all. Do you ever watch the show? Sure, right? Oh, no. One of my favorites, of course. One of my favorites. Truly one of my favorites. So next time you hear somebody come up and have a beverage, particularly an alcohol beverage product, you'll see um, Kevin O'Leary, who's in our space, in our business. He has a wonderful line of wine, uh, very astute to the business. The first thing Kevin will ask is, well, that's great, love your product, but how do you think you can possibly enter this market and get the key keyword, distribution? Distribution, like in any business, is critical. So you can appreciate, I could have the best craft vodka, K, craft for your name, um, with no distribution, that's what we have. We have the best craft vodka. So I don't know how much you and I can consume, but it's not going to be a business. The fact that we bring through my relationships of 45 plus years here, distribution relationships in the U.S. in addition to production relationships all over the world, we bring that complete package from concept, finding that cork, that label, that bottle, that liquid to distribution. And in, in between, I have an amazing team of people that work for me. Uh, that are geniuses in marketing and data and statistics and social media. So we kind of bolt on all those important pieces that at the end of the day result in a successful launch of a product. And then it's all about building that awareness, you know, creating that pull. You have to create that consumer pull. How do we get Mr. and Mrs. Smith to come out of their house, go into a liquor store, and today the business has changed a bit, and we'll talk about that later. And then amongst that sea of product, maybe a thousand vodkas pick up craft vodka. So creating the pull is the key. Once you create the pull, I assure you, there'll be no shortage of retailers looking to carry your product. People want to give people what they want. So that's concept completion. Got it. I mean, look, I, I have a feeling this interview might go north of an hour if we, because I, I mean, marketing is one of my passions. So I, I find, I find what you're doing very interesting, you know, so, so I have to ask because, and, and this is a quick follow up here, because I know that you work with various celebrities. Like, I, I believe you have a line with Christy Brinkley, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. You know, so, so how does, how does that work? Do you, are you sought after from some of these celebrities to say, Hey, hit up the iconic brands guys. Like they have a, they kind of have a one-stop shop to help you develop everything. Or do you reach out to various uh, known people or can anybody hit you up and say, Hey, we have this idea for an alcohol line. You know, can you help us launch this? You know, how, how does that work? Sure. Uh, fortunately, we have not solicited uh, anyone, uh, you know, over the years you get a reputation and we have a great reputation. And there was a, 
wonderful event that occurred a number of years ago, several years ago, not many, um, Bethany Frankel, skinny girl, margarita, phenomenal. My hat's off to her, she's brilliant. She created a brand uh, that's just sensational. And then she sold that brand to Future Brands, Jim Beam, for you know an amount north of a hundred million dollars. They say north of a hundred million because you hear numbers from 100 to 125, but a significant number. So Bethany was frankly brilliant in her execution. She had a brand that made sense. It was about her platform and people were attracted to it and it was authentic. After that happened, you could appreciate that raised the antennas of a lot of people looking to get into the alcohol beverage business. You know, everybody wants that gold ring. You know, when I was a kid, we used to go on a merry-go-round in the town near my home. And there was this merry-go-round, I was a little kid, and they had a little shoot with full of rings, silver rings, but one gold ring in that shoot. And you go around and you grab a ring, you grab a ring, and whoever got that gold ring got a free ride on the merry-go-round. It was a big deal, right? So I use that analysis when I talk to people, that analogy about gold rings. Those gold rings are far and few between in that shoot. So when we're approached by people all the time to develop a brand, we welcome people to come to us that want to develop a brand. So when we were contacted uh, by Christy Brinkley's team, uh, we met with Christy Brinkley. We had a lovely day with her. We went out to her home uh, on Long Island where you know we hail out of. and um, we did a little research and Christy's been, um, this is gonna speak to now what I spoke to you about, does the brand fit? Does it, you know, does it make sense? So we wanna do a little background on Christy. You know, she's been a vegetarian since she's 13. She's all about the ecosystem. She's organic. She tries to be vegan. She's as, as best she can. And just so happened that we happen to own a property, a line of organic, certified organic, certified vegan, 100% all natural, gluten-free, checking all the boxes, Prosecco and sparkling wines with one very special, special one that unless somebody came out with one prior to me going on air with you, was the only and is the only zero sugar, zero carb sparkling wine on the market. All natural, nothing added, no artificial sweeteners, nothing, completely pure, zero sugar, zero carb, sparkly mine, wine made from 100% Prosecco grape, known as the Glera. And it checks all the boxes, as we say, you know, so you can appreciate. Uh, it's been authorized on celebrity cruise lines for their new platform called Blue, where people that want to go on a cruise and eat healthier and not gouge themselves on a buffet and, you know, want to eat organic, they can order our wine on celebrity cruise lines. You know, there's a whole trend about, you know, health and well-being in the food and beverage space and we believe we're locked right into that with our product so when we met christy we said you know did a little background on you and you know we think this makes a lot of sense and she agreed and she loved the product that very day we met we decided on the name together bellissima bellissima prosecco and sparkling wines the most beautiful perfect for christy brinkley the most beautiful and christy's iconic you know, she's an iconic figure in our culture. Everybody knows Christy Brinkley. And I had all the right components coming together, that perfect storm. I had the right product. I knew I had the right partner in Christy Brinkley, and that's what she is. She's our partner. You know, this is not a licensing deal. It's not a, you know, just an endorsement deal. Christy is all in. She's a partner on this brand, and you cannot ask for a better partner. You know, she's the quintessential marketeer. Brilliant. The student. Absolutely. No. And so, so then I, I, I'm sure some of my investing audience would probably also like to know, and I'm sure you get this question all the time is, okay, so then what's the, the nature of the relationship? You know, how, what's the business strategy? You know, what's, what's the iconic take versus the, the Christy Brinkley take? Like, how, how does that work? Sure. So people that enter this space, and I tell all my partners this, all my brand partners going in from the very first time we meet, you know, I'm not in this, first of all, I'm not getting any younger. And second of all, none of us are. Um, I'm not in this to sell bottles of Prosecco. I'm not in this to sell cases of Prosecco. I'm in this to build a credible, solid brand to sell to one of the majors. That's the exit. 
you know, when you enter the building, you need to know where the exit is. So going in, we know exactly where the exit is. Then you go through this labyrinth, this maze to get to the exit. That's the development of a brand. That's the marketing, developing that pull. So Christy knew going in that we want to work hard, build something solid, credible, uh, worthy of a brand sale. The big major liquor companies are in acquisition mode every single day. You know, take it out of the book of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has been acquiring brands from forever. You know, whether they bring those brands to market or they consider those brands a possible threat and decide to just park them for a while, that's their decision. But ultimately, once we sell the brand, although I'd love to see the legacy of Bellissima go on and on and on because of the brand that it is, it's truly a one of a kind. From its packaging to the ink on the bottle that you can drink, that's how eco-friendly it is, to everything about it. So yeah, so going in, it's all about going out. Got it. And and so um, I have to just quickly follow up because I'm just I I can hear the investor. Sound. So what's the what's the numbers then? What what is that? What is that? What does that look like? What what percentage goes to iconic? What percentage goes to a potential sure. partner? Like how how does that work? So currently, um, the way it would go right now is iconic owns fifty one percent of Bellissima. That will soon move to with some other events that are going to be taking place with the company to 100% ownership of Bellissimo. In the case of a brand sale, and this is all public information, it's been disclosed, uh, Christy Brinkley would receive a back half percentage of that brand sale of 22.5%, and the company would retain the rest. Uh, with a distribution out to some people that along the way were worthy of develop the brand, et cetera, of another distribution. So it's quite, quite uh, advantageous to have this brand in Iconic's portfolio. Um, I, I believe it's an Iconic brand and with an Iconic partner. And uh, so the, the economics are there. It's all been disclosed. If you take a look at our K and our Q's from day one, everything's fully disclosed. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So now I want to dig into uh, the shareholder letter that Iconic put out on May 21st, uh, which covers recent highlights, developments, financial results, and new business opportunities. So can you, can you describe some of these items from the release? Yeah, absolutely. A very exciting uh, letter, you know, for us internally, and I, I believe for my shareholders, my current shareholders, and uh, hopefully it'll attract other people, you know, to at least look at us. You know, I'm not saying jump right in, just take a look, keep an eye on where we're going, where we've been going, where we came from. If you look at the trends in the company, out of my shareholder letter, our Q4 of last year was up huge over the year before. You know, I can get the percentages for you. Looking at those trends, and I'm going to tell you why they were, and uh, an event that happened last year, last spring of 19, that drove towards that. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the best, the best packages or presents are wrapped in the worst paper. And this unfortunate, this horrible COVID situation that's come across us in this country uh, last year has, if you will, redirected the river of distribution in the alcohol beverage business, not only the alcohol beverage business, but a lot of businesses. Uh, brick and mortar businesses, you know, where they could make that pivot have moved to the online. Um, our industry, just speaking about our industry, you know, the on-premise, we call the on-premise where you consume alcoholic beverages, a restaurant, a bar, a hotel, a lounge, a, you know, any place you consume on-premise, that particular part of the business has been decimated. <clears throat> you know, with social distancing, with people not having the opportunity to go to restaurants, only curbside pickups. Um, you know, now we're at a point, we're speaking today, it's June 2nd, things are starting to open up a bit. Um, you know, various states are in various phases. So we see that on-premise business starting to come back a little bit. But in reality, the online has been dominant. Americans have been buying their alcoholic beverages at record numbers online. And um, call it luck, call it opportunity. I believe luck has a lot to do with a lot of things in life. 
Last March, March of 2019, a little over a year ago, Christy Brinkley gave me a call and said, hey, Rich, she says, you know, I do some work with HSN, Total Gym. We all seen Christy Brinkley promoting the Total Gym with Chuck Norris on TV for years. HSN was purchased by QVC. QVC sells wine on their platform. As a matter of fact, I mentioned Kevin O'Leary before from Shark Tank. He has a line of wine on QVC, Martha Stewart, uh, Jeffrey Sicarian, the chef, but not a sparkling wine. And they were looking for a sparkling wine to go on to QVC. So Christy called me up and said, what do you think? I said, I think it's great. You know, I'd love to, you know, explore that opportunity. We were invited down to their headquarters. We made a presentation. They were in love with Christy to begin with. It was all about, do they like our product? And they fell in love with our product, the concept. To make a long story short, we go through the vetting process with QVC. The company gets vetted, the product gets vetted. If you make the cut to be on QVC, I can tell that it sound like a commercial for QVC, but if you buy anything on QVC, I assure you it's of the highest quality with the highest company or companies behind it, not only QVC, but the supplier. So rest assured, you buy something on QVC, you're good. So we go through the process. It comes now December 4th of 2019, roughly eight months later, I believe. Christy goes on prime time, two 12 minute segments with two different hosts at QVC, um, David Venable, one of them, and she proceeds to sell over 30,000 bottles of Bellissima Prosecco and sparkling wine in 24 minutes. Mind boggling. DPMs, wow. dollars per minute. That's what you measure by dollars per minute or off the charts. So we established the fact that People loved the platform, loved the brand, loved Christy, and were buying like crazy on QVC. What does that mean? So what does it mean to the whole COVID story where I started this big story? The fact was that during that eight month cycle of getting vetted, we had to construct with a third party partner, a back channel route to direct to consumer because we're not licensed, it's not legal for us, although we maintain our own import licenses and distribution licenses, selling to distributors in every state in the country and DC. But we can't sell direct to the consumer. There are companies that have popped up, you know, Vingo, Splash, Wine.com, um, et cetera. We all use them all the time. Drizzly, SIP, um, these companies established. And we had that whole infrastructure in place. So not only do we sell on QVC, we were able to put a button on our website, BellissimaProsecco.com. You could push a button and order Bellissima delivered right to your door at virtually the same price you could buy it in the store. This would be a very dangerous, if you will, um, exercise or movement, if you will, under normal times, because how would our retailers take that? How would our brick and mortar distributors take that if we're selling online now? But in fact, I made that decision. I knew it could have been risky, to be frank, to sell on QVC and to be selling online. But at the end of the day, it proved very interesting. It actually supported and built the brick and mortar business we already had established. People saw that on national TV for that time and, and became very familiar with Elysium. And they went out to their liquor stores and their wine shops and their supermarkets and ordered it. You know, we're carried in Wegmans supermarkets all over the, you know, their markets. Uh, other supermarkets have it on board, you know, certain Whole Foods, et cetera. It's coming into its own now, it's grabbing brand traction. So the online business has really developed and moved our balance sheet and the trend into Q1 of 2020 saw tremendous growth, over 300% over year over year. Uh, I can't tell you because we're not done with Q2 yet, but I can tell you that the trend has continued into Q2. And we expect this to continue into two, three, and four, and so on and so on as our company evolves. Not to mention what we're going to be bringing on to the company going forward that will further enhance that in brands. I, I was just going to—that was actually going to be my follow-up because you know it. You know, I, I was curious about the company's capacity. I mean, because Bellissima sounds like it's taking up a lot of the company's time. I mean, you got to follow the money, right? So I, I understand. You know, you want to make sure that it's properly marketed. You want to get it out there, especially if it's getting the kind of traction that you're saying, you know, but in terms of capacity and then working with other celebrities or other people that are looking to develop lines of, uh, of alcohol lines, you know, mm -hmm. what is your, 
I, I guess, do you have a maximum number of, of, of lines that you really want to be working with? Or do you have the capacity to, you know, just bring on as many that might make sense? I, I think the capacity to bring on as many as we want to, you know, although I would love to, and, you know, that's me because I don't like to say no to things. You, know, you have to be measured and you can't be too aggressive, even though we're very aggressive as is. I mean, I can tell you, and I'll, and I'll bring you, we're not just Bellissima Prosecco. I'm going to bring you, I'm going to segue you, you're going to segue me, and you just did, into a very exciting brand called Hooters. You know, so Hooters, everybody's heard of Hooters, Spirit, you know, restaurants. They're iconic in themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, five years ago, I started down the road of developing concept completion, a line of Hooters spirits, Hooters vodka, Hooters gin, Hooters rum, Hooters tequila, Hooters whiskey, Hooters heat, Hooters heat, cinnamon whiskey, very popular. We all know the famous brand Fireball, beautiful brand, wonderful brand, um, Sazerac company, you know, tremendous, you know, they've done such a beautiful job with that brand. And, you know, we have our own expression called Hooters heat that, you know, frankly, people prefer over that brand I was just talking to you about. Once you taste it, you're done, you're sold. So can you appreciate developing a brand for Hooters? As I said, iconic restaurant, everybody knows Hooters. You walk into a, an on-premise account, we spoke about on-premise before, you walk up to the bar, and in front of that bar person, there's something called the speed rack or the well. That's where if you go into a bar or restaurant, you say, I'll take a vodka and tonic, that's where the vodka comes out of. If you come in and say, I want a tequila and tonic, that's where it comes out of. You know, a rum and coke, that's where it comes out of. So you could appreciate that is a very sought after piece of real estate in that restaurant, in that on-premise account. Big liquor companies fight for that space every minute of every single day. Some win, some lose, you win. You, it's just a give and take, push and pull. We've now taken 200 corporate, 200 plus corporate Hooters stores where it's a mandated item and changed that whole rack out to be Hooters vodka, Hooters gin, Hooters rum, et cetera, et cetera. Took that right away from the major drinks companies in one swipe. And now we're in phase two of entering all the franchise stores. So that'll be over 400 wells that these big, you know, very disruptive. You can appreciate how disruptive this is. So concept to completion and in between that, huge disruption. If you follow through the marketing concept on this Hooters brand and Hooters being a pioneer, because everybody, once people start looking at this, they're going to say, you know, why aren't we doing that? Why aren't other national restaurant chains promoting their own brand? because it's not just about being in the restaurant. If it was just about being in the restaurant, I would have no interest in it. To me, it's about you, Robert, and your friends walking into a major box retailer on any given day and seeing a huge stack of Hooters vodka, Hooters gin, possibly with three or four Hooters girls handing out free merchandise like hats and t-shirts and whatever. And here's the one that took everybody over the wall. Everybody's fighting for consumer acquisition. You know, how do you get customer acquisition? You know, you look to provide the best service, the best food, the cleanliness of the restaurant, the cleanliness of the restroom, delivering the best guest experience you can. Hooters does a really great job at that. But here we're delivering a branded product of the highest quality. It's not well quality, it's premium quality. And on the neck of every one of those bottles, when you walk into that liquor store or that box store, here's the marketing, here's, here's the big finish. There'll be a coupon or a neck tag that gives you a free appetizer back at Hooters. So now we've created a revenue channel that Hooters never can imagine. We've also created a way that they can acquire a customer for a very inexpensive cost, you know, for a free appetizer. I mean, Restaurant CEOs, restaurant chain CEOs will give away free appetizers all day, every day to acquire that customer because nobody's going to walk in and have an order of chicken wings or whatever it might be and not have a beverage, not have maybe a side or something. And maybe their favorite game or their favorite NASCAR race is on the TV 
which we'll segue into in a minute, and watch the race, watch the game, and have a couple of beers or a couple of Hooters cocktails or have whatever. So you can appreciate, and who's not going to be attracted to buying that product? Once you buy it, you'll never buy another product that's that good. The price is incredibly competitive. I can't speak to every market, but on average, you're looking at a $12.99 liter price, or liter, a full liter of vodka, let's say, with a free appetizer and a free t shirt. You walked in, you made money. Didn't cost you a penny. So um, that's, that's just another one of our brands, and we've got several others backed up behind it. I hate to keep speaking in laboring on but I have this passion for this Hooters project because I view it as a domino and if you can appreciate Hooters is the first domino to fall and I can tell you that um, two other dominoes have fallen our way one of those dominoes didn't fit our platform or our profile but one fit very well and uh, we're deep into the conversation and I hope to announce that second domino very very soon and uh, you could call it a domino or i like to call it a thorn in the side of a major drinks company so here's the second thorn and there'll be many other thorns it might not be iconic that is the the winner of those thorns or dominoes but you could bet that other people are going to be jumping into the space for sure well well with that from what you can tell us what, what would you say are some of the company's goals for the rest of 2020 then <clears throat> So for the rest of 2020, um, the fact that we've been able to grow our business through this entire changing world, if you will, um, the changing of the environment of the business, uh, we know we have a model that works brick and mortar, and now we know we have one that works online. So the goal here is to continue to drive, continue to be very nimble, continue to be very disruptive in certain sectors of the business, and build out brand, add new brands, build out current brands. Uh, we have a portfolio that we're gonna be announcing that's so exciting that, um, you know, I, I just wish I could tell you about it, to be honest, I just can't. But uh, yeah, we're gonna keep driving forward um, on the brand side, on the corporate side, on the company side. Uh, you know, we're in a position right now to bring in some uh, additional talent, industry talent, solid talent, guys that, you know, and, women that have been in the business, that know the business. Uh, you know, right now our company consists of a, uh, a team of under 10 people that are really strong in the space, uh, marketing people that are phenomenal, uh, but we need to bring that head count up as we start to grow this business out with brands, et cetera, and, you know, geography. Got it, so with that, where can my audience go and find everything they need to know about Iconic Brands? So the best place to go is to the Iconic Brands website. So it's pretty easy. It's Iconic Brands, with an S, plural, Inc., or USA, rather, dot com. Iconic Brands, USA, dot com. Go there. You'll find a whole wealth of information. Uh, there are phone numbers there. There are email contacts. We, we, you know, if you want to go to our individual brands, which will lead you back to our website, go to BellissimaProsecco.com. Uh, but go to iconicbrandsusa.com, ICNB on the OTC QB. Richard, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a, Richard, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a real pleasure. I really enjoyed uh, learning a little bit more about Iconic Brands. I wish you the best of luck. Stay safe. And uh, I look forward to the next update. Thank you, Robert. Same to you. Stay safe. Most important. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.